The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. This is Charlie Sylvia with Cruise Lines International Association. Thank you so much for being on today's webinar, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, it's, today we, we're hosting Princess Cruises, and we have the Princess Innovates webinar for you today from the Princess Cruises Innovates Tour. And I have to tell you, I, I'm thrilled because I, one of my favorite people in the entire industry is going to present uh, this webinar today. It's John Cherneski, who is Vice President of North America Sales for Princess Cruises and Cunard Line. And before I, before I formally introduce John, um, I'd just like to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. So we have a few hundred people that are gonna be on this call. So I'm trying to buy a little bit of time 10 or 10 or 20 seconds so that people can log on already we've got over 100 um, but if you have any questions throughout the webinar please use the questions field on the go to webinar panel to ask your question you can ask it at any point uh, the webinar is going to run about 30 35 minutes and then we're going to take about 10 minutes worth of questions john will take 10 minutes worth of questions from you so please put them in as soon as you think of them also you got to hang in there with us the whole way through because at the end, John's going to be giving away three uh, Princess Cruises branded uh, giveaways, and um, and I'm going to be giving away two Clea branded giveaways. So um, please hang in with us, ask the questions, and um, if you do have to take a call to sell a cruise, don't hesitate. This is being recorded, so take that call, sell that cruise. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the esteemed presenter today. Uh, John Cherneski is Vice President of North America Sales for Princess Cruises and Cunard Line, and he is an amazing, amazing leader and very, very good friend of the trade. He supports travel agents, and you, find, you see him at all of the conferences and all of the events, and I don't think there's any greater friend of travel agents than John Cherneski. So, John, without further ado, welcome to the webinar, sir. Thank you so much, Charlie, and it's great to be here and appreciate everyone joining in, and especially during a busy uh, wave season. And like Charlie said, uh, now is the time to be booking those cruises. So if you got to jump off the book one, go for it. And this is being recorded, but do appreciate you joining in. And so for them, those of you that may have seen a version of this presentation, I I've, I've just want to give you a heads up before you just hang up. Uh, we've actually tweaked it, and I've included some new images and some new updates uh, from a recent trip I did on the Regal Princess sailing to the Caribbean. So let's dive right in. And uh, first up, for those of you that um, don't know what I look like, here I am. Uh, here's um, a very old picture of me. And uh, I always like to show this photo of me and my young boys, my twin boys, John and Michael, back when they were cute. And um, I just want to show an updated photo. Uh, they're getting less cute by the day, but I guess they're still kind of cute. Okay. And, um, and it, just to get back to, you know, I don't know how this picture keeps getting in here. I apologize. This is a photo of me on a casual Friday, and I don't normally like to show this photo of me, but um, there I am. So let's move right along. And I, we call this um, presentation the Innovates Tour because we asked the question, is Princess an innovator? Now, if I was with you all and asking the uh, question to you up front and, and you were to you were to decide is princess an innovator you'd all would say yes because you're being kind uh, because I'm in front of you but the reality is when you rate all the cruise lines and who is seen as an innovator princess doesn't really rate towards the top we're not seen as an innovator and one of our problems that's our own problem is that part of our core values is that we say princess is a quiet innovator we like to do things very quietly and don't talk about it very often but we've changed that for the last few years and we're really trying to get the word out there and so for this presentation I wanted to go back in some of the history of the innovations Princess has uh, delivered on first is movies under the stars we were the first line to develop that uh, we still do it better than anyone else I think which is great and get the, out there with the blankets and the popcorn at night and watch your favorite film uh, we've introduced a stargazing experience uh, with our partnership with discovery which I'll talk about uh, we were the first to introduce balcony dining for breakfast and for dinner and also balconies when I first joined um, this company and I've been with the company for 25 years I dropped right out of kindergarten and joined Princess. Um, balconies weren't everywhere. Not every ship had a lot of balconies. And so we were one of the first lines to really ensure that the vast majority of our cabins had balconies. Because what better way to experience the ocean and, the, and a cruise experience than on a balcony? Um, also chocolate. So Norman loved chocolate. Uh, we introduced through the Chocolate Journeys program a few years ago. And it's just amazing chocolate. Um, and so we, we introduced that. And then the, uh, the direct to wilderness lodge experience we have in Alaska. So only on Princess do you get off a train, 
literally walk across the tracks and go into your ship for your cruise experience or vice versa that you get off the ship walk walk onto the train and then go up to the lodge and experience it no planes trains and automobiles to get there it's a really slick and very easy transition and then last but not least destinations you know we're regarded as one of the best lines when it comes to destination planning and the places we take our our clients are really amazing are you sorry your clients are really amazing and so that's really what we're always trying to do is bring that destination uh to life so first thing that uh, any business owner which you are all travel agents you are all business owners whether you work independently or for a large consortia at the end of the day you are all business owners because it's up to you to drive the business success um, that you have and so you have to ask yourself that question who is my customer and so at Princess, we call our customer uh, the meaningful traveler. And I'll talk about that in a little more detail, but it's really an umbrella statement for various segments of people that uh, tend to like Princess the most. And so what these meaningful travelers seek is connection. It's all about not only with loved ones, but different cultures, different people, uh, experiencing new destinations and new experiences themselves, and then renewal. So whether it's mind or body, this is, these are the three big buckets that they try and focus on. And so in terms of some of the research where we looked at the meaningful traveler, what's important to them, 91% love the idea of traveling abroad, which is great because if they didn't, we'd be in big trouble because that's the business we're in. 81% uh, like to travel the unbeaten path. So that's also great for Princess because again, we have such a wide variety of destinations and the places we take our guests. 76% would rather spend on experiences rather than things. And I think we see this as a trend throughout society and especially millennials, they're much more likely to spend money save money and spend big money on experiences rather than things, whether it's jewelry or cars. Um, so we see that kind of consistently throughout. And then 71% um, would like to take a vacation somewhere different every time. Again, that's great for us. And then 41% say that those experiences differentiate them. So this was an independent study that was done uh, a couple of years back and so it really affirms why we're after the meaningful travel and why they're important to our brand so a number of years ago our corporation carnival corporation undertook a very intensive study to try and build segments within the industry and it was a segmentation study to try and figure out how to categorize all the people that are either cruising or interested in cruising and so they created eight categories for the entire industry this wasn't just our brand of families or our family of brands sorry it was the entire industry and there were eight categories categories and princess fit into four of those categories those are the ones i have on the screen here discerning rechargers adventures explorers social voyagers and learning families princess fits into four of them most of the lines fit into one or two the fact that princess fit into four speaks to the kind of the, the broad appeal that our brand has which is great that you don't have to be um uh, you know only one or two types of people to travel keep in mind these buckets that we create and people don't consider themselves oh i'm a social voyager or i'm an adventurous explorer that's not how they think of themselves but it's how we know them and how we market to them because it's very important from a marketing standpoint to try and connect better with them and final note on this is that people can bounce between the categories so one minute if me and my wife are going on a trip by ourselves we could be adventurous explorers but if we're with my our kids then we're more of a learning family so that just gives you an idea of how it how it bounces around um, I always like to talk about value when it comes to cruising and if I ask you to define what value means you know a lot of people think well it's about cheap or it's about price and really it's not about price it's about it's about what you get out of the experience because at the end of the day you know a Ferrari is a great value for somebody like Charlie I think he owns two of them um, it's really uh, about what you're getting out of it rather than the price you're paying and and 91% of travelers say that value is the top factor when choosing a cruise line I'm actually surprised this isn't hundred percent this is to me everybody should be looking for value no matter how much money you have 73% of cruisers say a vacation is better value than a land-based vacation so these are people that are already cruising and a vast majority of them say they like this better than going on land base which is awesome and I like to show this slide because this to me is the opportunity for us as an industry, not just as Princess Cruises. 25% of non-cruisers say a cruise is a better value than a land-based vacation. And that's pretty amazing. That's the group of people um, that we wanna go after. The end of the day, and I, and I wanted to mention this on the last slide, the hardest job that you as travel consultants, travel agents have is really qualifying your customer for the right brand. And what I like to say is that, you know, there is a right brand out there for everybody and it's your job to try and put them on that brand. And it's important, especially for first time cruisers, that you find the right brand for them, because if they've never cruised before and you put them on the wrong brand, you always run the risk that you've alienated them from cruising in general. And I would much rather you put them on Holland America or Carnival or Seabourn or even outside of the Carnival family on Royal Caribbean, if that is truly the right brand for them, because that is really what's best for the customer. And at the end of the day, you're a business owner. You need to do what's right for your customer. 
Um, we've just launched, for instance, has launched a series of TV ads, which hopefully you've seen. It's a national campaign. Uh, it's running through um, the Olympics, actually. We're going to have some good uh, exposure on the Olympics, uh, the Winter Olympics coming up in Japan. Uh, and it's called Change. And here's some, there's a number of ads that are out there. And uh, they're really emotive to me. There's some great footage and really trying to get people inspired to hopefully call you all to book uh, your next cruise. So let's talk about, um, you know, when I mentioned value, one of the things for us is really about increasing the value proposition of taking a cruise on Princess. And so we partnered, uh, one of the things we did was we partnered with Discovery uh, Networks, Discovery, Discovery Communications, and created Discovery at Sea. And this is a multifaceted program that uh, not only deals with uh, adult programming, but also things for kids. And so I want to talk about a couple of those features uh, that we introduced. I mentioned stargazing earlier. I just experienced that on a recent trip I did, and it was really amazing. Uh, we've introduced Camp Discovery. So we're theming the youth centers and the programs to, uh, for the kids uh, with the help of Discovery. Not a lot of people think of Princess when it comes to um, families and to kids. And, and the reality is we carry a large number of them throughout the year. Obviously, during the spring break, the holiday season, the summer breaks, that's typically the time they travel. Um, but we have amazing kid centers, great youth uh, staff on board, great facilities. And there's activities for not just kids to be kind of dumped off in the kid center, although sometimes you need to do that because you need to have some sanity, um, but also just for families to connect with their kids, which is really important. And notice not a single cell phone seen in any kid's hands in this slide, which is really amazing. It's, uh, it's quite an accomplishment. Um, so we, like I said, we rebranded our youth centers on a number of our ships and it's just underway. So we have the tree house for kids ages three to seven, three is the minimum age for checking into the center, uh, the lodge for eight to 12, and then the beach house for the teenagers, 13 to 17. Uh, we also have uh, family accommodation, so a number of third and fourth birth state, state rooms, which is great, and we have definitely promotions out there to help, uh, you know, incentivize people to bring their kids. Uh, we have a number of connecting state rooms. This was something we used to not have, but we've now retrofitted a number of our ships to have up to 100 connecting cabins on the, on the, on the ship so that the families can stay side by side, as well as a few ships that do have two-bedroom uh, family suites. So another uh, element element of our discovery programming is the access that's given us to exclusive tours uh, throughout the world. So whether you're in St. Petersburg uh, or in Alaska, we're able to give opportunities that otherwise we wouldn't because of our connection. And the best example uh, I like to give is in uh, Costa Rica when we're doing Panama Canal cruising. Thanks to our partnership with Animal Planet, we were able to bring our guests to a sloth sanctuary. Uh, it's a very small um, tour that only 30 or so people get to go. And because the sloths get injured every now and again, they bring them to this place and rehabilitate them. And our guests get to go and see them up close and personal. Uh, for those of you that are maybe new to the industry, uh, one of the things that you may not realize is that one of the obstacles to people taking a cruise is they may say, well, and research shows this, that, oh, I don't get to spend enough time in port. And so we created what we call More Ashore. And this is where we took a very hard look at our itineraries and figured out how can we stay longer in port? Because when people go to a destination, even though the value, the best value of a cruise is the fact that you can unpack once and see multiple destinations, multiple ports, or multiple countries in some cases on a single cruise, the reality is you want to maximize your time in each port. And so we have a number of calls where we're staying either overnight or until 9 p.m. or later. Um, and so this is highlighted in our brochures under the More Shore program. So for any of your clients who may be hesitant because, well, I'm not going to get to spend enough time in port, um, we have tried to address that through this program, which is working uh, really great. So for eight years in a row, we've commissioned a study. It's what we call our relaxation report. And for 2017, our report showed a few kind of alarming statistics. So 49% of Americans, about half, are getting less sleep than they need. So if we were in a room and I said, everybody raise your hands if you got way too much sleep last night. I'm guessing none of you would raise your hand. Very rarely do people get more sleep than they need. It's just kind of the way we are, unfortunately. Um, there's an average of four days of off per year that people take just to catch up on sleep. And that's really uh, alarming that you're taking days off of work just to catch some sleep. 51% um, of moms get less sleep than they need. Now, I think we can all agree that this would be more alarming if this was 51% of dads because dads are babies and we need all the sleep we can get. So thankfully it's the moms who are carrying the burden of the work here. But clearly that's not good because they're not getting uh, enough sleep and that's not what we want um, to have. 63% of Americans struggle to get a good night's sleep when they're on vacation. You go on vacation, you want to relax, but the bed's not comfortable. So that isn't good. So we invested um, in developing what we call the Princess Luxury Bed. 
And we didn't just buy a, or work with a mattress company and develop a, a cheap mattress. We actually worked with a sleep doctor. This is a board certified sleep specialist, Dr. Michael Bruce. He's been on a number of shows, Oprah back in the day, um, Dr. Phil. He's always on TV and he does nothing but study sleep. And he helped us develop this mattress for all shapes and body types because at the end of the day, this isn't just one t- person that's going to be sleeping in this bed. It's multiple people. And we want that to make sure that it's, uh, make sure it's comfortable for everybody. We also work with Candace Olson from HGTV fame. Um, to help develop the beautiful bedding. And it's really an amazing night's sleep. And uh, I did a film shoot, actually, and I, I laid down, and unfortunately, I fell asleep. Um, so here I am. A lot of people say I look like I'm in a coffin. I am not in a coffin. This is me sleeping in the Prince's luxury bed. And so those are um, rolling out on all of our ships now, and it's wonderful. So one of the other features we did to raise that value proposition is introduce what we call club class mini suites. So these are the mini suites that are in the highest categories on our ships, so anywhere from 30 to 50, depending on the ship. And it's not only the better location, you get uh, priority embarkation, you get upgraded uh, amenities in your cabin. The highlight to me is the dining. Now, I just sailed on the Regal Princess um, on the, right after uh, Christmas, over, right over the New Year's holidays with my family did a 10-day Southern Caribbean cruise on the Regal, and I'm going to show you a number of pictures and references throughout this presentation. And we were lucky enough to sneak into the club class uh, category, and the highlight was dining. So there is a cordoned off section of the main dining room where you can go for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You never have to wait in line. Um, you don't sit in the same table every time, but you can if you really make the request. But you walk right in, you get seated. It's um, a different linen. The waiters are in different uniforms. There's uh, head waiters are making table side dishes. Uh, it's really an amazing experience. And so, a couple of photos here. So here's uh, our waiter Robert with my sons uh, Michael and John. And then uh, here's my son Michael just loving the pasta uh, one night. The food is amazing. We were just so blown away by the food. Um, here's my dessert one night. And I just want to say that the souffle plus the three things of ice cream was probably a little bit much. So I, I wasn't doing anything to help our food cost uh, in that moment. But it was just wonderful food. And uh, it was amazing. Speaking of food, you know, it's all about fresh on board princess. We make everything from scratch on board. Uh, we've been awarded the best burger at sea uh, for the Ernesto burger. It's really an amazing burger and the best pizza at sea. And I've tried, I think, every pizza out there. And I can, my personal opinion is that we do have the best pizza at sea. And so while I was on board, I actually, I offered to make a pizza. And uh, here's what it looked like. It didn't come out very well. Um, and so we kind of uh, said, you know, what? let's scrap that. I'm not a pizza maker. And this is what I had for lunch one day. We ate so much in Alfredo's Pizzeria. It's a wonderful place and just such great fresh pizza to have. Uh, from a food standpoint, we also partner with a chef named Curtis Stone. He's a famous chef uh, from Australia, award-winning chef. Um, not only is he a beautiful man, but he's an amazing chef, got a really great passion for what he does. And we have uh, dedicated restaurants on our ships that are called Share, which is his concept. Uh, and this is on the Emerald, the Ruby, and the Sun Princess. But on every other ship, we also feature his dishes in the main dining room. We call them Crafted by Curtis. When I was on the Regal, every night in the dining room, when his dishes were offered up, I, I took them up because or I, I said, yes, please, because I just love them and, and really amazing dishes and bringing a nice uh, – upgrade, I think, to what we're offering. Sabatini's has been around for a number of years uh, on our ship. So we've actually rebranded it. And I was really thrilled on the Regal to be, get to experience it. It's called Sabatini's Italian Trattoria. Uh, we have new recipes. Uh, we're bringing in um, menu items that our chefs, our Italian chefs, are recommending from their, where they're from in Italy. We actually lowered the cover charge to $25. And then we partnered with a gentleman um, named Angelo Oriana. He's a famous chef here in Los Angeles. Uh, used to work at a Michelin star restaurant here, now owns two of his own restaurants. And he's introduced fresh from scratch pasta, and, uh, and as well as a number of other dishes. And he's really brought kind of a good um, revitalization back to Sabatini's. So this may sound like a really simple thing, but we had dinner in Sabatini's with my family and the menu was amazing. And I, one of my boys loves spaghetti and meatballs and it wasn't really on the menu, but I said, can you guys do spaghetti and meatballs? Oh yeah, we do spaghetti and meatballs. It was amazing. The pasta is so light and airy as are the meatballs. It's not heavy. Um, and this is what happened to it in about five minutes uh, after I cracked into it. It was just incredible. So highly recommend you go to Sabatini's and order off the menu. Order the spaghetti and meatballs because you will not be disappointed. 
It's really great. So I used to work in the entertainment department, and I've noticed that um, the longer I'm away from that department, the better they seem to get. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Uh, but we've introduced a number of elements uh, with our entertainment offerings. And one of those, which I've just got to experience finally on the Regal, was the voice of the ocean. So this is where we take the number one TV show, and we bring it onto the ship, and, the, and guests get to participate. And there's rehearsals. There's tryouts. It's very serious. And there's a big production show at the end that features them singing with the audience voting and the um, – on who the winners are. It's amazing. And I really was impressed by it. So even if, you know, you don't think you're a great singer, you never know, give it a try. So recommend it to your clients when they sail uh, on princess. We've also partnered with, um, a gentleman named Steven Schwartz, who he may not be a household name, but his shows are in the past. He's done shows like, um, Godspell and Pippin, um, and wicked, which is my personal favorite show. He created all those. And so he's actually doing four exclusive shows for princess. His first up was called magic to do awesome show born to dance. I just saw this on the Regal and I was so impressed with how well it was done. And when you're hearing from choreographers who have worked on shows like Hamilton and they're talking as part of this show, it's really amazing. And we have a new show coming out um, called the Silk Road, which I don't want to give too much about because we haven't really announced it, but it's going to be amazing. And if you like uh, Jim Henson and his old puppets, that's, we're kind of bringing that back to life. So that's coming up. Um, so look out for that. I'm really excited to see it. So again, I mentioned earlier about destination and how Princess prides itself on taking our clients around around the world. And every year we look for this uh, survey result. This is the Gallup poll that, that they do every year of travel agents. So this is all you guys voting. And you are here rating, this is the results from 2017 of which destination you recommend um, for Princess and how you rate Princess for each of them. So Alaska, you said we were number one. West Coast and Mexico, you said we were number two. Uh, Mediterranean and Europe, we said we were number two, or sorry, number one for West Coast and Alaska, and then number two for Mediterranean and Europe. And uh, we're, we're gonna try and get that number one spot back. Hawaii, we're number two. No surprise, NCL has a year-round presence. And Caribbean is number four. Now, we were number two for the Caribbean a couple of years ago, and, the, and I think one of our problems is that we stopped doing year-round presence. Well, 2018, we're going back to the Caribbean year-round. I'll talk about that in a second. But this really is a good testament from you all in terms of where you feel comfortable sending your clients on which brand. So when we talk about Alaska, we've been rated number one. Travel Weekly Awards for uh, the last 10 years, or actually it's 11 years now. Um, 2018 is our biggest season. We've got some amazing cruise tour opportunities. Um, the North to Alaska program um, is something we introduced about four years ago, and it's really about bringing the destination onto the ship. So I'm not sure why we put an ax in a guest's hands, but we do a demonstration with the ax throwers up in Ketchikan. Um, and we also have brought the, some amazing uh, animals onto the ship. Uh, through what we call our Puppies in the Piazza program. Look at these gorgeous dogs. And we actually bring them on into the ship. These are dogs that are born into sled dog families. These are, these are dogs the parents have raced in the Iditarod, and they're going to grow up and hopefully do the same thing. So we bring them into the Piazza. Guests get to interact with them. It's super cool. Uh, we also do a really cool shore excursion called Cook My Catch, where you go out on a fishing excursion, catch a salmon, and then you don't have to bring it back on the ship, put it in your backpack, get all smelly. Not at all. We'll take care of it for you. We will pack it in some ice, bring it back on the ship, and then our chefs are going to prepare it for you for dinner that night. So talk about uh, fresh fish and really an amazing experience. And if you don't like the fish, it's your own fault because you caught it. No, I'm kidding. You're going to love it because it is really uh, fat, fresh, and uh, it's such a cool experience to be able to say you had a professional chef cook your fish for you. This is a photo that a professional photographer took a couple years ago in Ketchikan while he was on vacation of an eagle. And I'm joking about the professional part. I just got lucky in taking this picture. But how amazing to have the wildlife so close uh, to you. And that's what we experience on our cruise. I mentioned the Caribbean and the fact that we're going back uh, this year year full year uh summer of 2018 which is awesome and uh again i i want to show you a couple pictures from my recent trip we had such a blast i hadn't been to the caribbean in a few years and it was a great reminder about how amazing it is and following the hurricanes it was also great for me to see just how are the islands recovering and so we were in saint thomas we were in martinique uh, we were in princess keys we went down to grenada to bonaire and curacao so we had a little bit of eastern and some of the southern caribbean and St. Thomas is where we saw uh, most of the um, um, kind of the damage that had been caused. But at the end of the day, while there are still some trees down and some of the resorts uh, haven't reopened, we're able to take our guests to beautiful beaches and have amazing excursions. So, um, you know, when your clients are, are worried about that, let them know not only is the Caribbean open, but it's as vibrant as ever. And, uh, you know, tourism is, really, tourism is really the way that we're going to help those islands recover. So here's uh, some selfie with a GoPro um, snorkeling. Uh, in Bonaire, amazing snorkeling there. This is a shot underwater of the Stingray at our new Stingray experience on Princess Keys, which is our private island. Um, here I am at the Stingray experience. Now this is a sea cucumber, and a sea cucumber has a head, and like everything, it has a butt. 
and they don't know which end is which, but if you kiss the head, it's seven years of good luck. So I rolled the dice and I kissed it and I'm not, you know, ashamed to admit it. So there I am. Uh, here we are in Curacao. We run into some uh, dune buggies on this great tour. We went out to the very rocky coast to see the amazing ocean and the water splattering up. And we actually went to, and this may sound a little weird for some, we went to um, these caves, or these naturally formed volcanic caves that have been around for centuries. And there's bats living in the cave. So we got to walk in and have these bats flying around us. And it was just an amazing thrill. I can't, I can't forget it. It was just awesome. And we also went to an ostrich farm. This was right before this ostrich tried to peck my eyes out. These are mean creatures, but I was able to get this photograph taken. Um, here I am underwater with a beautiful angelfish in Bonaire. This is all taken with my GoPro. Um, here we are in uh, Curacao. As you can tell, my one son is exhausted because we were so busy. We were having so much fun. Um, but I can't miss not showing a beautiful sunset shot. And that's what we experienced. So it was just a great trip. And if you follow me on Facebook, you'll, you'll have seen some of those photos. Um, but moving right along, talk about Europe. As you know, we go to Europe. We do a great job, a great variety of itineraries. The Med is really selling strongly this year. I will tell you that we are seeing a huge interest in the Med. Um, so don't, you know, make sure your clients aren't waiting to book there. We've got great British Isles cruising. Uh, the Baltic cruising is amazing. Um, and, you know, great opportunities to check out all of Europe. Our Americas that we call it, which includes our Mexico, our California coast, our Hawaii, our Panama, Panama Canal. We were the first line to have a regular schedule to go through the new set of locks in the Panama Canal. Don't forget those bigger ships can go through it now. And our Caribbean princess has done that. Uh, look forward to it. And of course, Canada, New England, which is one of our most popular uh, itineraries for seeing the leaves change in the fall. And then our exotic uh, runs, which includes Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific, Japan, Asia, South America, World Cruise. One of the things that I love um, to talk about now is the fact that we have our Majestic Princess, which has debuted in Australia. This ship originally came out and it was introduced in the China market, but we brought it down to Australia, New Zealand, so North American guests can experience it. And it's a wonderful ship. So it's the third ship in the Royal Regal class. So third of that class, unbelievable Michelin star restaurants on board, private karaoke rooms, great shopping. Uh, I was just talking to a guest on the Regal and he said the Majestic Princess was his favorite ship of all the Princess ships. So I haven't even been on it myself, but I can't wait, but it's going to be amazing. When I talk about uh, Asia, I have to talk about Japan. It is one of my favorite countries I've been to. Here's a photo. Some of our team members on sales and our marketing guys went to Japan um, for a fam trip. And uh, in the top right, you can see the ladies dressed in their kimonos. And if you've never been to Japan or your clients are looking for something a little bit off the beaten path, it is amazing. I was, I've been there a couple times and the quality of service, the quality of the food, the history, the culture, and, but it's a very expensive place to go to and difficult to get around, but a cruise is the best opportunity. And you'll, beauty, when you're on board the cruise with us, you're also interacting with Japanese guests because they're there as well. It's built for them, but we have a good influx of North Americans as well as Australians and Europeans. So a great melting pot experience. Uh, so please recommend that to your clients. Um, we have our limited time offers are pretty much always in market and our anniversary sale is going on right now. It expires on February 14th. You know, we get up to $600 in onboard spending money plus specialty dining for all the guests. Great opportunity, great sale during wave. So take advantage of that. Um, if you're not taking advantage of our group program, uh, please look into it because this is really where we see agents who maximize their profits are doing so through the group program. Uh, really flexible program. We think it's the best in the industry and a great way for you to offer value to your clients and earn TC um, credits back, which is uh, really helpful for you from a business standpoint. Um, I want to recommend the Future Cruise Sales Program. Uh, really, you should be recommending this for every client you have when they go on, not only Princess, but every cruise, because we all have it out there. And it's a great way for you to have your client rebook. Uh, just all they have to do is place a deposit for their next cruise. For Princess, if you do that with your clients, the booking comes back to you. Don't worry, we're not trying to steal your clients. The booking comes back to you and you get up to $150 in onboard credit per person. So it is basically lost money if you don't take advantage of this. So please highly recommend it. And what we see is a 15% uh, increase in the ticket price of those that book it on board because they're now looking at maybe uh, a richer destination or a nicer meta, a nicer cabin. So please have a conversation with your clients, email them while they're on the cruise saying, hey, don't forget to take advantage of your future cruise sales booking and get the deposit done and come back home and we'll, we'll finalize your actual cruise details. Welcome home program is for those that forget to do that when they're on board. You have a reduced um, onboard credit benefit that you get, but 
It's still a great program, but I definitely recommend first doing the future cruise sales. Uh, we have our Captain Circle program, uh, which we think is the best loyalty program in the industry. And I'm I've qualified now as an elite member. And I have to tell you, you know, when you when you think about the free laundry, the free internet, the things that we give, uh, the special cocktail parties, and the elite lounge, when you get to that level, it really makes a difference in your cruise experience. And that's one of the things why we hear such great uh, feedback on our loyalty program. We have a great referral rewards program. Um, the number one source of, of trusted information for people when they're buying anything, whether it be a TV or a car or a cruise, is, hey, what did your friends think of it? And this is a great way for you to ask your clients. Every time you're booking a cruise with someone, ask them, do you want to refer a client, a friend of yours to us to make another booking? They don't have to travel uh, with them on the same cruise to get this benefit. It's a $25 on board credit. So if you have a client who refers a friend in who also books a cruise with Princess, they each get $25. There's no impact on your commission. There's unlimited referral. So if you have a thousand uh, friends, they can do 25 bucks um, for each of those, $25,000. Awesome. They, they again, like I said, don't have to sail on the same cruise because sometimes friends aren't that friendly. They don't want to actually spend time with each other. And it's combinable with our group programs and all of our LTO. So please look into that. Um, another obstacle of um, people taking a cruise, especially in a more exotic destination, is airfare. Oh, well, I don't want to deal with the airfare. It's too expensive. We've introduced Easy Air, which is allowing us to take advantage of our corporate relationships. We, Carnival Corporation buys more air tickets than I think anyone on the planet. And we've arranged this program to secure not only great pricing, um, you get to uh, have late arrival protection. And so if, if for some reason the flight is delayed and you miss the ship, we will reroute you to the next port on uh, not on your dime. We'll take care of that. Um, you can pick your airline, pick your seats. Uh, the rates are incredible. Business class rates are even amazing. So highly recommend if you're not um, taking advantage Advantage of it that you do. Uh, Princess Academy is uh, now 10 years young. We launched this training program 10 years ago and over 2 million co courses have been completed. And if you qualify and graduate into the Commodore level, you not only get a free cruise on us, but you also get to travel as an elite guest uh, when, as long as you have your Commodore status. So like I mentioned, elite is awesome. Um, but because of the academy, and I talk to agents all the time, and you know, particularly if you're new to the industry, uh, Princess Academy is the most uh, robust and thorough of all the training programs that are out there. And so I would recommend that you start with Princess and go through um, all of our training because you'll learn about all the destinations. And so start with that, build it as your base, and then absolutely take the other, take the Hall in America course, take the Carnival course, and really understand the uniqueness of those. Uh, and the Cunard course, of course, I said of course twice. Um, to unique. Back on that as well. Um, Ocean Medallion, I want to just mention this briefly. Last year we talked a lot about Ocean Medallion, but I wanted to provide a brief update. So we had originally intended that the Regal Princess would launch at the end of last year, full ship, everybody would have the experience. And as anything that involves a lot of technology, we realized that uh, we needed to take a step back and really make sure we were getting this right for a small group of cabins, a small group of guests. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're rolling out functionality uh, as we speak. Uh, there are some enhancements, uh, especially on the Regal Princess, one of which is the internet. We call it Medallion Net, and it is so fast. It's faster than some people's connections at home. I was streaming a football game on my f iPhone on an ESPN app while we were at sea one day. Um, my wife wasn't too happy with me, but priorities. So it, it's really fast. And so we've done some things to enhance the experience. The terminal in Fort Lauderdale has been upgraded, but the true, the full Ocean Medallion experience, uh, we're really um, kind of um, going back uh, to basics on this to make sure that we get this right before we start announcing it. So if you've read about Ocean Medallion, just know that it's for a limited audience on the Regal until further notice when we look to expanding it, not only to the full ship, but eventually to more ships. So just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, we've won a bunch of awards. You know, every cruise line has these. We've we've won our all of our fair share of awards. Uh, the one award that I think is really amazing uh, that I want to talk about is that Cruise Critic gave us the best overall cruise line for first timers. And you and you may be wondering why. And I think if you look back or think back to that earlier slide where I talked about how Princess fit into four of the eight segments that exist for consumers within the cruise industry, that tells you right there that we are a good appeal. We appeal very nicely to a broad section of uh, consumers out there. And that's definitely, uh, I think, why we won this award. So it was really cool. So uh, a number of years ago, a few years ago, I think it was three or four years ago, McKinsey did a, the largest ever study of the cruise industry, 50,000 people who had taken a cruise for the first time in the year. And they were asked to rate the question, I'm extremely likely to consider cruising with this cruise line in the future. And in the premium segment, Princess was the highest rated. Uh, and this, at the end of the day, like, Again, you have to put your clients on the right brand for them, but it was nice to see that Princess was the highest rated and uh, ultimately 
you, know, you want to put your clients where they're going to be satisfied and uh, give them the most bang for their buck, the highest value proposition you can do. So uh, with that, I want to thank you very much. I know I sped through a lot of information there, but hopefully it was rewarding. Um, please uh, check me out on Facebook. Uh, don't look for my name because it's not under my name because if they fire me, they want to be able to keep the account going. So if you just search for Princess VP Sales uh, in Facebook, you'll find it. Um, and with that, I will open it up for any questions and uh, thank you all for listening. Well, thank you, John. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, folks, I have put John's... Um, the Princess VP Sales uh, link to his Facebook page uh, in the chat. And I've also put a link to Princess Cruz's official channel on YouTube. Uh, you should each, every single person on this call should go to that YouTube uh, channel and not only subscribe to Princess Cruz's videos, but also hit that little alarm bell that is to the right of the subscribe. So we encourage you to check out the videos so that you can stay in the know on all of the amazing innovations that this uh, cruise line has to offer. Um, John, we've got a bunch of questions here. Let me, um, and we will be I'm looking at them, Charlie. Right I'm looking the at these questions. Do you want me to run through them real quick? Because I see them on my screen as well. Oh, yeah, please. Okay, so first up that I, uh, other than some um, just kind of nice comments, and, and I appreciate all those. A couple of them making fun of me, but that's fine. So first question up, how many ships are going to have a year-round presence in the Caribbean? So the Caribbean Princess, aptly named, is going to be the ship that stays through the summer uh, in, in for this year. So that is just the one ship that's doing it. But then obviously we have ships in the spring, in the fall, in the winter. So um, one question was, people can, this goes back to the cook your catch uh, tour. People can just bring their fish on board and ask to have the fish cooked? No, um, that's not how it happens. You go on an excursion that we have a fishing excursion we set up so we can properly transfer it back to the ship uh, so nobody uh, gets food poisoning. Um, yes, I hope also that I wasn't kissing the butt on that. Um, somebody's asking for more information on Hawaii. So if you can reach out to your local BDM, business development manager, they're happy to help you, or go online, or go on to onesourcecruises.com, which is our, our sales portal. Um, and you can also, if you're looking for specific marketing materials, it's on one source about Hawaii. And then we also have a module on Hawaii as well for training. Um, I think I gave an update on medallion. I think that question came in before I touched on that. Somebody's asking for the club class mini suite offering. So you have priority embarkation, you have uh, upgraded amenities, uh, in your cabin, you have upgraded bathrobes, you have a mini bar set up, and then you have the um, dining, which again, I think is the most, uh, it, when we did, we've done some research and looked at what people value the most, the dining really jumps to the top of the list, but it is nice to have all those other things uh, as well. And this is a great comment. It's my first webinar on Princess. This is awesome. It is really smashing misconceptions I had about its demographic. So that's nice to hear. So thank you for that. Um, who should we contact about Princess Academy? So if you go onto onesourcecruises.com and sign up, you'll have an opportunity to go in there and you can register and begin uh, part of the training. And then do the Alaska Cruises have formal nights? Yes, there's usually one formal night on a seven day. We do not do trips to Antarctica at the moment. We used to, and then we do not at the moment. Highly recommend Seaborn for that, by the way, if you've got some cash, that's a great experience. Um, but stay tuned for hopefully some future announcements on that. How am I doing on time, Charlie? You're doing great. How many, ship, how many ships are leaving from Miami and Fort Lauderdale? So it depends on the time of year. We don't turn from Miami. Uh, Princess doesn't. Uh, we're uh, exclusive to Fort Lauderdale uh, for all of Florida. Somebody's asking about highlights of groups. So there's a lot of detail on groups. And if you go onto one source, you'll be able to download a, a sheet on all the features of it. You can take out spec groups. Um, if you're part of a uh, large consortia, then there's different um, opportunities there. Again, BDMs can really walk you through that. We have a whole module in Princess Academy about how to maximize your group business. Um, we do weddings on board, so somebody's asking about that, and um, we were the first to actually have it where the captain is marrying you, or marrying the couple, not you specifically, but marrying the couple, uh, which is really cool. And 
so we have some information on our, our princess site and um, we actually work with a, um, a third party that helps manage all the arrangements for any wedding on board because of that you know bridezilla it is true it's a lot of time a lot of energy and we want to make sure we do it right and so we manage that through a group um, that is amazing at what they do and full-time job for them so uh, what happens is you book your cruise first and then you contact them to make sure all the arrangements are set but you can always reach out to them as well um, to ask any questions before the cruise uh, is booked and and the weddings are not free. Believe me, weddings are not free. Trust me, the most expensive thing you'll ever do in your life. I'm kidding there. Um, but yeah, they are. There is a fee associated with that for the captain's time and all the cocktail parties and all that kind of stuff. Okay, what am I missing, Charlie? It's a lot coming in here. No, I, yeah, I think that I think we have. I think we've cut right through. Um, John, I had a quick question. What? Yes, sir are the characteristics what are the best practices what are the, the common traits the common denominators of your most successful of princess cruises most successful agents what are they yeah, doing right yeah that's a great question well i think you know uh, the challenge that every travel agent has is that it is a very busy space like there's a lot of cruise options both ocean and river uh, um, and there's so much you have to know and i think what we've seen with uh, the, the agents that really sell the most with us is it helps to have a passion, first of all, for what you're doing. And um, to get on board one of our ships really helps kind of build you that emotional energy for it. But even if you can't, that's why we developed the Princess Academy, because we know you're busy. We know you don't have time to go around and sail on every single cruise line. Um, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of people specializing only in one cruise line and only selling one cruise line. Again, because you need to put your, your customer on the brand that's best for them. But if you invest some time and become certified in Princess Academy, it isn't, I'm not, it's not going to take you an hour. It's going to take you several hours. You know, I think it's like 40 hours of courses you have to go through to become Commodore. So you're not going to do it in one week necessarily, but over time, give it a few weeks, give it a few months, you become Commodore, you have that base of knowledge and you always sell better what you know, right? And so we see double digit increase. Once you become Commodore, we've measured that the increase in your sales with us goes up double digits year over year because you're selling what you know. Now, and that's exactly what we see with CLIA certification. You're absolutely right, John. You know, uh, if, if you are, uh, if you're keen on Princess Cruises, get certified, become a Commodore, and make that investment. Remember, you're you're in charge of it, folks. Uh, you right. can set the pace that you do it at, and that's and that's the really big piece of advice that I always offer agents, especially those starting out, is don't overwhelm yourself. Uh, start with a brand that you really like, and 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 do their certification program and of course become a clear certified cruise counselor. Um, but yeah, the statistics prove that the sales are there. A um, couple more questions, John, before yep. we do the giveaway. Do you see them? Um, there was, well, I see Sharon somebody, Sharon, asking, yeah, Sharon's asking about the ports beside yeah. Fort Lauderdale. So in addition to Fort Lauderdale, yeah. uh, we sail out of New York. Uh, we do a limited run out of Boston. We do um, Los Angeles, big presence in LA. Uh, we do San Francisco. We, we essentially have a year-round presence in San Francisco, which is really awesome because we're able to do not only Alaska during the summer, but we'll do Hawaii runs. We'll do uh, Mexico, coastal, California coastal runs, uh, which is great. And um, even in LA, we're introducing round-trip Alaska cruises. So if you have clients who are in the LA area, what better way to drive to the port and take a cruise to Alaska? It's a 12-day cruise. Uh, we've only have a couple of them, and they're just amazing uh, interest there because you don't have to spend uh, the time and money on flight. So, well, that's great. And um, John, I, I had uh, someone ask Susan Cook actually asked if the credit is given for Princess by Clea. Yes, there are uh, Clea credits that can be earned by taking, uh, you know, Princess Academy. So uh, you are fulfilling your Clea, uh, uh, your Clea certification requirements when you're when you're fall when you're pursuing Princess certification. Um, I think that's about everything, John. You know, I want to oh, touch on Mimi's you know question. She says, is the Regal the only ship with some ocean medallion? No other ships at this time, and the plan itinerary for release is not in effect. Correct. That is correct, Mimi. So it's Regal right now, and then we will announce as we expand to other ships. And you have what? You have three uh, three vessels on order for the next four years, right, John? Yeah, so we have um, the Sky Princess, which comes out um, next year, uh, which is the fourth ship in the Royal Princess class. And then we have um, two more ships in the same series, but no details have been announced um, following that. Yep. 
And then uh, after that, who knows? We'll see what's going on, but uh, watch this space. I'm sure we'll have something exciting. Yeah, everybody, the best way to stay in touch, uh, obviously, is is through uh, one source and, and obviously following John on Facebook. That's very, very important. He has such incredible content. Uh, it really keeps you in the know. Um, and And speaking of in the know, Ladies and gentlemen, you realize that Princess Cruises offers you, I think it's, um, I think it's around $75 in uh, bonus commissions through your CLIA membership. So when you're a 2018 CLIA individual agent member, uh, you've got some great bonus commissions that uh, Princess Cruises has available to you as a member of CLIA. And heck, that, that pays for practically all your CLIA membership right there. So John, mm -hmm. on behalf of the trade and all the CLIA membership, really thank you for, uh, for your generosity there. You bet. And I think it's a great investment for us because at the end of the day, we really love working with CLIA. And I want to, I forgot to say earlier, congratulations to all, congratulations to all of you for being a CLIA member because that shows you take your job seriously and what you're doing. And, you know, without that uh, knowledge and, and exposure to the training opportunities and the networking, you know, kudos to you for making the investment because it's, it, it'll pay itself off very quickly. Well, John, I think it's time to give away some prizes. Um, and I, if I'm it. not mistaken, Anna, are you there in Washington, D.C., Anna? I am indeed. And I'm right. hoping, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm hoping you could randomly select five people. Uh, John, uh, can you describe what your giveaways are? So uh, first prize is a um, frame photograph of me. No, I'm kidding. It's a 25-piece <laughs> 25 piece set of Norman Love chocolate that we will send to you. And I want to warn you, you have to eat this chocolate. You can't let it sit because there are no preservatives in this chocolate. So there's an expiration date on it. So, but 25 pieces, I'm sure you'll find some friends that will help you. And we're also giving away uh, a pair of uh, Princess branded binoculars, which is we um, love them for Alaska uh, because, you know, get a, a chance to spot the wildlife. So we have some binoculars. And then we also have a little beanie baby wolf. Uh, not a life-size wolf. It's a tiny little cute thing. And so those are our three gifts, chocolate, binoculars, and a wolf. And I'm going to be giving out two CLIA pop sockets, which are these really cool gadgets for the back of your uh, smartphone. It allows you mm. to have one-handed one -handed operation, and it also acts as a kickstand, so you can watch videos on your smartphone. We're going to give away two of those. So, Anna, mm. let's start off with the Norman Love chocolates. Who's the winner of Norman Love chocolates? Sure, let me just go through our attendee list really quick and randomly pick someone. Looks like Patsy Simmons. All right. Uh, did you say Patsy? Patsy, yep. Patsy, congratulations on the chocolate. And how about the binoculars? Binoculars will go to Ernestine Long Fleming. Ernestine All right, Long Ernestine. I hope you use those binoculars on a princess cruise, Ernestine. <laughs> and folks, don't worry. Uh, we have your uh, email addresses through the GoToWebinar platform, so we'll reach out to you and get your addresses. How about that wolf? Who's that st stuffed wolf going to? That wolf is going to Valerie Riley. Congratulations, awesome. Valerie. And then the two clear pop sockets. Let's, let's get those two names right now. Sure. One of them is going to go to Winnie Chin. And, Congratulations, Winnie. Yep, and that second one is going to go to Alice Leach. Alice, congratulations. Use it in good health. Well, John, thank you so much. Any parting thoughts before we close? No, I just want to thank you all for investing the time uh, in this opportunity to learn more about Princess. And I also wanted to thank you. Um, I help oversee the Cunard team as well. It's another great brand you should be looking at for your clients who are looking, for, especially transatlantic cruising, great Europe opportunities. Alaska actually coming around the corner for Cunard. So some exciting things about an amazing historic brand uh, you obviously know and love well too, Charlie. Uh, and I want to ask Charlie, I know there's a bunch of other questions that have come in. If I think we'll help answer them maybe via email, if you kind of send them to us and we can get back to those people that didn't get their questions and answer live. Absolutely, John. We'll send you a cool. listing of all the questions so that no one gets left out. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, John. And thank you, Anna. And thank you all who have attended. Uh, this is Charlie Sylvia with CLIA. We'll see you next time, folks. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.